Hello friends, this video on tissues part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We'll move on to the next connective tissue that is ligament. So the ligament is a dense connective tissue. What is a dense connective tissue? As I mentioned before, a connective tissue which has more of fibers in their um, extracellular matrix. So they are known as fibrous connective tissue or dense connective tissue. So the, now, so ligament, what is a ligament? So ligament is a tissue which connects two bones. Now since it connects two bones, that is why it is a connective tissue. So if you look at this picture, you have two bones here. This is one bone, this is another bone, right? As I mentioned before, the cap of the bone is cartilage. So this is, this is cartilage. So what is ligament? Something which will join these two bones. So if you see here, this portion it is actually joining these two bones right so this is cartilage so anything which joins two bones is a uh, is a i'm sorry it is a ligament so ligament is a fibrous connective tissue it has more of fibers it contains collagen fibers and elastin protein so this is what it is mostly made up of collagen fibers and elastin protein I, we talked about However, in brief, but we talked something about collagen fibers. It is one of the fibers which are uh, secreted by the connective tissue. It is the most abundant fiber as well. Right? And this is the fiber which is responsible for the flexibility of the connective tissue. It is considerably strong. I mean, it is not very weak. It is considerably strong, but at the same time, it is not very strong. You would have often heard people uh, come across uh, with these kind of problems like their ligament is teared or their ligament have broken off, right? Because, because of some kind of, uh, not only accidents, because of some minor things also, minor, minor accidents can also cause damage to the ligaments because ligament is not very strong. It is an elastic tissue. It has elasticity, so it can bear some kind of um, twisting and curving without breaking itself because of the presence of this protein elastin it has this elastic properties little extracellular matrix so in this when you look at the structure of a ligament it has got very less extracellular matrix it has more of five fibers as i mentioned dense connective tissue while I was talking about the structure of connective tissue, I already told you, right, that what will, what will be the quantity of extracellular matrix, how much will be the fibers, how much would be the ground substance. So it all changes with different kind of tissues. Now, since it changes, therefore, the structure of the tissue changes and therefore the property of that particular connective tissue also changes. So now in case of ligament, they have got very little extracellular matrix. They have more of fibers and that is why they are also called as dense connective tissue right but since in fibers also it has collagen fibers and elastin protein so these two together gives it some flexibility and elasticity so even though it is dense but it has got elasticity because of the presence of these fibers so let us now look at the next connect dense connective tissue that is tendons the tendons and ligaments, people often confuse between ligaments and tendons. So as I said, ligaments are those which connects bones to bones. When I talk of tendons, it connects bones to muscles. See, in our body, everything has to be interconnected, right? If you connect only the bones and if you don't connect the bones to the muscles, what will happen? There will be nothing to keep the muscles intact, right? So everything has to be connected with each other. Correct? So now we have connected bone to bone with the help of this ligament. Now this bone has to be connected to the muscles also. So that is done by tendon. So it is actually connecting the bone to the muscles. It is again a fibrous connective tissue. It contains mostly collagen fibers. So now this does not have elastin protein. It has good strength limited flexibility so now you can understand from where did the flexibility come because the uh, ligaments had both elastin protein and collagen fibers so due to the presence of the elastin protein it has little more elasticity so it had little more flexibility so because of the presence of elastin protein it, uh, uh, ligaments had more flexibility but where when compared to the tendons now however tendons are made up of collagen fibers so it is not that it does not have flexibility at all because collagen fibers also gives some flexibility to the tissue. So it has flexibility but to a limited extent.
So now we will look at the next type of connective tissue that is aerolar connective tissue. So let us see what is aerolar connective tissue. It is a loose connective tissue. What do I mean by loose connective tissue? I mean, see, these are all simple terms and you can guess what it means. Like dense connective tissue meant that it has little of um, extracellular matrix. So more of cells, more of fibers. So that is why it was fibrous connective tissue. Loose connective tissue means it has the cells are widely dispersed in extracellular matrix. That means the cells are far apart from each other. And there is a lot of extracellular matrix that you can see. So that is a loose connective tissue. <clears throat> now what are the characteristics of a loose connective tissue? It has loosely organized fibers. The fibers are not also very congested or they are also not too much. So they are also loosely organized. Abundant blood vessels. There are too many blood vessels present within these kind of tissues. Enough empty space which makes it Call, be called as loose connective tissue because you have so much of empty space. Now what is the purpose of this tissue? Why do we actually have aerolar tissue? It binds skin to muscles. As I said, everything has to be binded to one another. When you have bones, if, you, if we say that bones form the skeleton of our body, so bones need to be connected to other bones. For example, our feet needs to be connected to the knee. Knee has to be connected to our uh, body. And then again, the shoulder has to be connected to the hand. So everything needs to be connected. So all the bones have to be connected. So bones to bones connection was done by ligaments. Again, bones has to be connected to the muscles because the muscles are the ones which actually help us in movement, in moving our body. Because this connective tissue, the purpose of connective tissue is to connect every part of our body. So bone to bone got connected. Now bone to muscle connection is needed for movement because muscles actually help us in movement. So bone to muscles was done by tendons. That's also fair. So now the bones and the muscles are all connected. Now we have something called skin at the top of everything. So we, you have to connect it to skin as well. So skin to muscles were connected by this aerolar tissue. So it fills space inside organs and holds them in place. So basically, it fills up, the aerolar tissue fills up the entire empty space between the skin and the muscles. Like inside our skin, we immediately don't have muscles. There is some space, right? So that space is filled by aerolar tissue. So it also sometimes helps in repair of tissues. Okay, it also helps in repairing tissues. Now this aerolar tissue is strong enough to bind tissues yet it is soft enough to provide flexibility and cushioning why is it so because it is soft because of lot of because they are loosely connected so since there is lot of empty space there is lot of extracellular matrix therefore it has lot of flexibility so there is one advantage of this flexibility that it can give a cushioning effect to the organs present inside our body. And just as I mentioned in one of the previous cases, I took that example, right? If you want to carry a glass object, what do you do? You wrap it in uh, something. You wrap it in a towel or you wrap it in some cushion-like structure or you wrap it in a thermocoil box so that it gets some cushioning effect and does not break. So similarly, aerolar tissue has a lot of flexibility so it can act as a cushion for some other organs. And it is most widely found in vertebrates. This tissue is most commonly found in vertebrates. Now, this tissue... Is, there is one unique thing about this tissue that is because of the presence of lot of empty spaces it, it has got huge flexibility but at the same time this tissue has lot of strength so this tissue is strong enough to hold the organs in their places for example in our body inside the skin we have aerolar tissue everywhere so now this tissue will actually help to keep the organs in place. It will keep the heart in its own place. It will keep the lungs in its own place. It, it will not allow things to move from here to there, right? So it is at one end, it is a very strong tissue. At the other end, it is a very flexible tissue. So sometimes the appearance of this tissue is also... Um, very diverse. Sometimes the appearance of this tissue looks very similar to dense connective tissue. Sometimes, not always, because the appearance of aerolar tissue is not similar always. Sometimes at some places they have lot of fibers and they look like dense connective tissue. However, they are aerolar tissue. 
right so i hope you are clear with what is areolar tissue it is something like something which fills up everything between skin and muscles something like that so since it fills up everything it acts as a cushion also it binds the skin to muscles and at the same time it sometimes help in repair of damaged tissues so where do we actually found it it is found in the space between skin and muscles it surrounds blood vessels and nerves it is also found in the bone marrow so these are some of the places where we can find areolar tissue so let us have a quick look at the structure of areolar tissue so when i talk of the structure i'll again talk of the extracellular matrix so in this case the extracellular matrix is fluidic in nature so it is a fluid matrix which is made up of proteins and what are the cells embedded in the matrix many different types of cells are actually present widely dispersed ones are fibroblasts so fibroblast is one of those many types of cells which are present but this is most widely found so the mostly most abundant of all different types of cells is fibroblasts so it looks somewhat like this if you look at this picture this is the matrix the dotted structure shows the matrix which is a fluid matrix made up of proteins now inside that it will have the cells so these are the cells with nucleus so these cells there are many different types of cells other than fibroblasts we are not getting into the detail of those types of cells but the most abundant ones are the fibroblasts other than that it also has fibers as i know, as we know that the extracellular matrix will have something called fibers and something called ground substance so it has mostly collagen fibers and elastic fibers so due to the presence of the collagen and elastic again it has got the properties of flexibility now the cells are connect generally connected by ground substance made of collagen and elastic fibers so the how the cells communicate with each other as i said in case of bones they were communicating using the special tunnels called canaliculi because in that case the extracellular matrix was very dense but in this case the extracellular matrix is good enough which has ground substance which has got some fibers also so they actually help in communication between the cells let us now go ahead with the last type of connective tissue which we are going to discuss now that is adipose tissue so it is a connective tissue which mainly acts as fat storage site okay so so far we saw that we talked about almost everything which can form the skeleton of our body and we have also filled the spaces between the skin and muscles with areolar tissue now there is one thing which is still missing and that is the storage of fat now you would have seen that there are many people who are healthy enough who are obese so where do their fats get stored when people start eating a lot they don't do exercise and they keep sleeping and eating and do not work what happens they start gaining weight now as they put on weight what do you think what happens with them we start we start calling them as fat right why because fats are getting accumulated inside their body but that means there are some areas where the fats are getting stored so this kind of issue actually helps in storage of fat so that is the main purpose of adipose tissue so where do we found this find this adipose tissue it is found in bone marrow it is also found in the breast tissue it is also found below skin so below skin is the area where people actually start accumulating fat breast tissue is something where by default people have lot of fat again bone marrow is also a place where this tissue is found right now the purpose of this tissue is it provides insulation from heat and cold now what happens when lot of fat gets accumulated inside your body what will happen it gives you insulation you would have seen that if there is a person who is very fat and there is another person who is very lean and thin if both of them go out in a in a summer day right so what will happen the person who is fat he feels little more hot as compared to the thin person similarly if they go out to a cold climate if the lean and thin person needs 
two sweaters, the fat person would need only one sweater. That's because the fats which are being accumulated in his body, that fat provides an insulation. So it pro protects him from heat and cold. So that is one purpose of the adipose tissue. It provides protective padding to organs. So now again, the same thing when you have so much of fats accumulated in a tissue, so it actually acts as a cushion. So, it, so when, whenever it acts as a cushion, it becomes like a protective covering to many organs. It reserves lipids which can be utilized as energy when needed. Similarly, like for example, you would have seen that there are so many energy drinks available in the market. Not only energy drinks, you would have also heard your mom saying that drink a glass of milk, then you'll get energy so that uh, you can study hard and you can do well in your exams. Why do, does she say so? Because they think that milk has lots of nutrients which will actually give you energy. So when you drink milk or when you take any other um, substance which has got energy, so these adipose tissue helps in reserving the lipids which can be later utilized as energy when needed. For example, right now you have taken some nutrients and you want to um, do some, some work after one hour. So when you need that energy, that energy can be utilized. So this adipose tissue basically act as a storage for fats and lipids and besides that it acts as insulation from heat and cold and as protective padding to various organs. So when you look at an adipose tissue, it looks somewhat like this as, uh, as has been shown in this picture where you have big globules of fat. So we will talk about the structure of adipose tissue in the next slide. So let us now look at the structure of adipose tissue. Now in adipose tissue the extracellular matrix is not seen as such. And what are the cells embedded in the matrix? Many types of cells are present but out of them the most abundant ones are known as adipocytes. So the cells of adipose tissue are known as adipocytes. <clears throat> cells are filled with fat globules in the form of triglycerides. So if you see, this is a cell, right? And inside the cell, if you see, you have got a big fat droplet. So the fats are stored in the form of triglycerides inside these cells. So if you look at the structure of adipose tissue, so if you look at the structure of the adipose tissue here, you can see that the entire thing is filled with the fat globules. They, are, they have big fat globules which contains fats in the form of triglycerides, right? Now when does a person become obese? When do we say that a person is suffering from obesity? Obesity means excessive weight. When the number of adipocytes increases than the required number. So there is a desired number of adipocytes which should be present in a person depending upon his age and sex, right? Now when that number of adipocytes increases, that means the number, each adipocyte has got fat droplet right so the number of adipocytes increasing means the fat droplets increasing that means the amount of fat in the body is also increasing so when the number of adipocytes increases than the desired number we say that the person is suffering from obesity thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.